in Cincinnati. Still following the trend of just trimming Emrakul. Yep. So it looks like we're coming in. Jeremiah is up a game wow, nice. uh, against Ollie. Uh, Ollie does have an Ulamog Ooh. on the battlefield, though. So. Yeah, and Jeremiah has no attacking power. Well, it looks like we're going to be going to game three if this is 0-1 in Jeremiah's favor. So hopefully we'll be able to see that. If you're not familiar with this matchup, basically the way it works is the Affinity deck is just, uh, like we saw before, just a hyper-aggressive uh, synergy-based deck that's really, really fast. And then the green-red Tron deck is going to be looking to develop a lot of mana, start to catch up on the board with some really big fatties like Worm Coil Engine and Karn Liberated, and then slowly start to dominate the game from there. Absolutely. So uh, while I'm sure they have already sideboarded, let's go ahead and take a look at these sideboards and see what we think we could have expected from the two of them. Uh, so we do have Jeremiah Bodensteiner again on Affinity against Ali Entrazi, who is on Green Red Tron. Uh, we'll have those sideboards for you guys to see in a second, but in the meantime, let's talk about them. Uh, Jeremiah does have two Thoughtseize, two Blood Moon, Good card in Blood yeah. Moon. Two Whip Flare, three Ancient Grudge, a Spell Skite, a Spell Pierce, a Dismember, a Slaughter Pact, and two Gear Per Aethergred in his sideboard. So what would you do in Jeremiah's spot? So I think the, uh, again, I just want to put the caveat of there's, you don't want to water down your aggressive strategy too much, but I think the Blood Moon is certainly a slam dunk because you really want to shut those Tron lands off. Ali and Trazi's deck is, the way that it gets a lot of extra mana is by having specific lands. And if Jeremiah turns them into mountains, Ali's going to be choked off on mana. The other card that can be really good is Thoughtseize, just so that you can, you know, take away one of those big fatties before they can hit the board. Also, uh, Ancient Grudge has a lot of utility. There's a, a fair amount of artifacts in Ali's deck, and on the opening turn, sometimes he'll play an artifact and not have enough mana to activate it, and an Ancient Grudge can kind of get in there and one for one it, or maybe two for one it if you get the flashback. Absolutely. One of the few ways um, outside of having a forest or a chromatic star, something to cast Nature's Claim, that all he has to answer uh, Blood Moon is going to be Oblivion Stone. Yeah. And Ancient Grudge is going to give him a way to actually answer that. Yep, for sure. Again, though, I'm n I would be surprised if he brought in all three Ancient Grudges. For sure. Uh, on Ollie's side, we have two Relic of Progenitus, two Thrag Tusk, four Nature's Claim, a copy of Ghost Quarter, three Pithy Needle, two Spell Skite, and a Fire Spout. What do you think Green Red Tron Master Ollie is doing? Yeah, well, in a certain regard, almost all of these cards are kind of on the table. Uh, the Nature's Claims are obviously one of the most efficient one-for-one -one spells against an artifact deck. You could kind of make an argument for Ghost Quarter just because the uh, Nexuses on Jeremiah's side can be really, really threatening. Pithing Needle, though, is probably a better way to answer those because you can just name Blink Moth Nexus and none of his Blink Moth Nexuses are going to do anything. And then Fire Spout is just a good card to kind of wipe the board if there's a lot of small creatures, which is basically Affinity's game plan. So again, Ali probably doesn't want to bring in all of those cards. It depends on what he wants to take out. He doesn't want to water down his own strategy too much. Absolutely. But I think a lot of those will actually come in. Now, Ali, even though he did beat me to Season 2 Invitational, <laughs> we are good friends, so let's learn a little bit about him. He's 28 from Matthews, North Carolina. He has two Invitational Top 8s with one win in uh, last year, Season 2. He has 11 open Top 8s with two wins. Now, he is a self-proclaimed best mixtape creator. Wow. He is a professional teddy bear namer, and he's the 2011 U.S. National Champion. So I think that uh, I would like to contest him on his best mixtape creator. I do have some skills myself. Uh, and I, I'm not very good at naming teddy bears, so he can have that one. Well, those are some pretty sweet accolades, but I'm, I'm definitely more interested in the mixtapes than the teddy bears. I wonder if he has a Spotify uh, station or something like that where we can kind of look at that stuff. He probably does. So let's go ahead and uh, go back to the match. Ali and Trossi on Green Red Tron uh, tied up against Jeremiah Bodensteiner on Affinity. Both of these players are 4-0, so they're battling to be undefeated at 5-0 here in this round and put themselves in good position to make day two. So it's looking like both players are keeping their opening hand. Let's jump into the action. Jeremiah is going to lead off on a Blink Moth Nexus. going to cast a Springleaf Drum, just like Affinity do. He's going to play an Ornithopter, make some mana, obviously going to cast something else. Wow. Another Springleaf Drum, and pass. Man, four permanents on turn one. Yeah, it's a pretty good start. What you got, Ollie? 
Although Jeremiah right now can only attack for one, despite all four of those permanents. Yeah. <laughs> despite all his rage, he's just an ornithopter that can't do anything. Yeah. We're really going to need to see uh, a cranial plating or arcbound ravager. Now I do see two different white bordered cards in Ollie's hand, so it looks like he does have the potential to have a natural Tron on three. But he's just going to start out with a mine and a chromatic star. Yeah. It looks like he sideboarded in the Pything Needle, so it'll be interesting to see what he names with that. I think that the two best things to name would be Cranial Plating and Arcbound Ravager, but I don't know if he wants to run it out there without seeing one of those cards first. Yeah, so it looks like Jeremiah is just going to play a Darksteel Citadel and then cast an Arcbound Ravager and uh, Dollar So Donuts. That's probably what Ollie's going to be naming yeah. with his Pithy Needle. And we're going to get, ooh, there's that Ancient and Grudge. And there's the Ancient Grudge, wow. He still draws a card, though. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh. we got a reader. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's how it works, unfortunately. So Ollie's going to draw a card off that trigger for Chromatic Star, which used to be in the old Affinity decks with yep. Arcban Ravager. You could sack it and draw a card. So it looks like Ollie has a Spell Skite in his hand, a couple other cards to play. Let's see how he decides to go with this turn. And so this is really illustrating the point that I said before, where Jeremiah gets onto the board fast. Ollie's probably not going to do much that impacts the board for a couple turns, but then he's going to be really looking to catch up, uh, likely on turns three and four. Yeah, now it does look like he has a Sylvan Scrying. We've got a Pyroclasm. Uh, I imagine he's hoping that he can get that Pithen Needle down on the Arcbound Ravager, uh, hope that it doesn't grow too big, and then sweep up everything with a Pyroclasm next turn, since he does have a Grove of the Burn Willows to give himself some green mana. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Jeremiah does if the Pithing Needle gets cast. But it doesn't look like it's going to be this turn. Oh, he has a Spell Skite. He also could just play Spell Skite, which technically shuts off the Rat Ravager anyways. Yeah. So it looks like Ali has a lot of disruption for his Affinity opponent. Uh, he is going to be doing a good job of making the Affinity deck just not play the way it wants to play. But Ali still needs to find some point where he kind of turns the corner and starts impacting the board in a larger way because... Jeremiah is mounting an offense and is going to start pushing through. And impacting the board in a large way is exactly what the Green Red Tron deck does. So yeah. we, are also, one, we are one piece away, away here from having Tron turned on, and then at that point, Karn Daddy can come down at any point. Yeah, Pyroclasm is likely going to do some work in catching him back as well. So we're going to see an attack here from the Nexus. If Jeremiah doesn't add anything to the board, Pyroclasm or Pithy Needle Pyroclasm might be a pretty good turn coming up here. Yeah, for sure. And the Spell Skite is going to make the any action with the Ravager a, a little more complicated. So now Ollie's decided to block the, the Ravager with his Spell Skite, and Jeremiah's put it in a spot here where he has to decide if he wants to get rid of some of his board to grow this Ravager. Uh, it might be a good idea to get rid of that Spell Skite uh, so that he can free himself up to put counters on his land if he needs to, but it also makes the, the Ravager get out of Pyroclasm range before Ollie could potentially have the chance to put down something like Pithy Needle, which isn't that unheard of out of these sideboards. Yeah, I have to imagine that Jeremiah is considering sacking the Ornithopter and the two Springleaf Drums, just because the Ornithopter doesn't have much utility on its own. It's not really doing anything here on the board. And the Springleaf Drums are really, really good at getting an explosive start. But now that we're starting to get into a little bit more of the mid game for Affinity, they're, they don't have as much need of uh, a lot of mana. Yeah. So I have to imagine that this is, oh wow, and he sacks his Darksteel Citadel. So evaluating, or valuing the Springleaf Drum as being a source that produces colored mana more than the Darksteel Citadel that produces colorless. Absolutely. Wow. So now the Spell Skite is down, and that was essentially a three-for-one trade. So not too bad for Ali in terms of card advantage, but the issue of board presence is still vastly in Jeremiah's favor. So now we see Jeremiah is just going to play an Inkmoth Nexus and pass the turn. Looks like Ali does have another Tron piece, but it is just another power plant, which isn't going to fully power him up. Yeah, I don't believe he has a really big creature to play, even if he did have Tron here. It just seems like he has disruption. And now that that uh, Ravager is a 4-4, Pyroclasm isn't going to be able to do anything. Absolutely. So Ali might actually be in a little bit of a sticky situation. He'd really like to draw uh, something to just kill the Ravager. Yeah, so I imagine that he's going to Sylvan Scrying here to find the last piece of Tron. 
still play a Pith and Needle so that he can turn off that Arc Band Ravager uh, to prevent any shenanigans of it going onto lands if he does happen to find a way to, to answer it and just hope to draw into Karn or something like Ancient Stirrings into Karn. Yeah. So it looks like Ollie's going to find an Urza's Tower here with his Sylvan Scrying. Mirrored an All Star. Yeah, really, really, really good card. I mean, just whenever you get to search your library for something specific, that is always something that is going to make uh, s strategies that are difficult to bring together easier to bring together. Yeah, I remember playing that card a lot back in the day, finding my cloud posts. Oh, yeah, nice. So that I could tooth and nail. Ooh, that sounds... That's kind, a, kind of dating myself, but oh well. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, that uh, magic was a different time when that was going on. Oh, it was. Things stacked, it was great. Oh, yeah, damage on the stack? That was really fun, way back in the day. All right, so I'd be a little surprised to if Ollie doesn't pit the needle. Something. Yep. So let's see what he names. That's I have to imagine it's the Ravager, but yeah. you can make an argument for the Nexuses, but it looks like it is the Ravager. So it looks like Ollie's just going to pass the turn back. So despite Jeremiah being ahead on the board, uh, he still hasn't done that much damage. So Ollie's got a little bit of time to find a way to deal with this Ravager, and he could deal with it in the form of just drawing a Worm Coil Engine or finding a Karn. Yeah. Or also he has his nature's claims that can also deal with it. Absolutely. So it looks like we're getting some mana. Oh, that's, that's gonna interesting. Flash back the ancient grudge. Okay. Hmm. Now that's pretty interesting. I, I feel like it might have been better to activate one of the next. Oh no, no, that wouldn't have given him enough mana. This way he still gets to get in. Oh wow! So he's going for the infect route. So he's got a two-turn clock. So he's basically saying, draw Karn now, or are you dead? Yep, two-turn clock. So this is a really aggressive line. Jeremiah is essentially all in. I can, it, I can respect it. Yeah, I can too. I mean, when, you, when, when you're when you playing Affinity, this is what you came here to do. Ooh, so we got a brick from Ollie. Well, it's a redraw. He does have multiple Pithy Needles, right? Yeah, he has three, so a Pithy yep. Needle would work here too to turn Pithing off Needle would be great. Nexus. It would turn off both his Nexuses. Because he's got two of the Ink Moth now. Oh, he does have a Ghost Quarter in hand. Never mind. Oh, that's really good, he, too. Hey, he's not dead. Oh, man. Ali's just got all the bases covered. He always does. He, he had a lot of Ghost Quarters when we played Amulet versus Tron in the finals. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he boarded all the extra ones in, too. Well, he played two in his main that week because he was ready for the deck. Oh, wow. In fact, a funny story that weekend. We were working on Amulet, and he mm -hmm. decided to play Tron because he didn't feel comfortable enough with Amulet, oh. but wanted to be prepared for Amulet. Oh, wow. Sounds like he's just hating against his uh, friends. So Jeremiah's going to pick up that Ghost Quarter and read it and realize it's not going to go too well for him. But yeah. the good news is, is he does have another Ink Moth Nexus, so yeah. he can... Ali does have five turns, and he's dead to that second one. And considering he has both, Jeremiah can just activate the 1-1 one, one Ink Moth Nexus and kind of force Ali to deal with that, or just not use the Ghost Quarter. So Jeremiah still can squeeze a little bit of extra value out of this interaction, even though it's really bad for him. Let's so we'll see, see what so he wants got to do. Another Ravager. I feel like I would have used the the Nexus with the counters on it. Yeah. That, that way I could tap the Ravager and activate the Nexus without the counters and just try and get in some more poison damage. Yeah. This, I mean, no matter how Jeremiah does it, it's still not going to be great for him, but... So it looks like we're just going to... Ollie's go, Ollie is going to Ghost Quarter in response to the Ravager, which is going to get him a land. Yeah, and he's short he on land, so that's pretty good. He does have a basic. Yeah, he has a mountain in his deck. And now Ali, you know, he's can potentially. Uh, yeah, he does have the tower in his hand still for next turn too. Mm -hmm. Ali just has lands and a pyroclasm, though, right? Yeah, so he he definitely needs to to draw a little something. He's got time though. Jeremiah doesn't have too intimidating of a board. Yeah. The worst thing is probably that Ink Moth Nexus. It's still a 1-1. One, one. And we'll see if Jeremiah wants to make it bigger with another artifact and some sacrificing. Ooh, what could this be? A Spell Skite. Mm, okay. That's pretty good. So we do have a Spell Skite from Jeremiah. We're going to pass it back to Ollie. He's going to take a draw for the turn. Looks like he picked up either a Nature's Claim or an Ancient Stirrings. I think Nature's Ancient Stirrings. So it looks like he's going to cast that. Jeremiah, you can have a life go up to 22. Now, Ali really wants to find a big fatty. Karn, he want, yeah. Karn or Wormcoil Engine is what he's looking for at this point. 
so far he's just kind of found one for ones and he's been, he's been able to use them well, but they haven't really amounted to a whole lot. Well, Oblivion Stone isn't the worst. Yeah, Oblivion Stone is quite good, but he's, he would still prefer to have something that had Can a bit higher in impact. Game. Yeah. He's done a good job buying himself a lot of time, and Jeremiah is starting to run out of gas. So I would say that Ali's probably favored from this point, but without anything that really does anything, uh, you know, like a Karn or a Worm Coil engine, it's, he's just kind of treading water. It'll be interesting, interesting to see here if he decides to use a Pyroclasm just to get the Ravager off the board before it can do any more damage, or if he's just going to play, play a Tron land, uh, or even a non-Tron land just to get some out of his hand uh, so that he can put that Oblivion Stone on the battlefield. Looks like he is going to Pyroclasm here just to get, try and get that Ravager off the field. It's a little dicey, though, because it seems like Jeremiah could bump it up to a 3-3 three -three if he wanted, or maybe just bump it up to a 2-2 two -two and then stick the counters on the spell skite. Yeah, I think I think I actually like making it a 3-3 three -three here and then just I trying to win with that Ink Moth Nexus. Yeah, so essentially Ali traded his Pyroclasm for two cards, which is still good. I mean, he's an artifact from dead. Yeah. In fact, he is dead because he can activate the Blink Moth Nexus. Uh, yep, absolutely. Yeah, the, the Blink Moth can tap itself. Yeah, so unfortunately it looks like Ollie was just in a tough spot. Yeah, the poison damage will get you. And this this is uh, really shows how Jerem Jeremiah kind of set himself up for this because he hit him with the early five infect counters when he could have done other damage. Yep. And knew that once he got that, that he was likely able to finish him off in that manner. Taking a little page out of the... The blue green infect book. Yeah, just, for sure. Just, just, get, just get them in, get it in where it fits in, yeah. and then try and finish it off a little and, bit later on. And and it's really really good because Ali, one of the cards that he could have stabilized with was a worm coil engine, and you know no matter how big of a ravager you have, you're gonna have a hard time racing through a worm coil engine. So Jer Jeremiah by getting that infect damage in covered one of the ways that Ali could have gotten back into the game. Absolutely.